The first tank designs were different from their modern counterparts, to say the least. But that's for a good reason. Nobody knew what the standard for tank design was going to be like. And out of all of the early tank designs, the saint Shimon exemplifies this quite well. I mean, just look at it. It looks more like a ship than it does a tank. Just put some masts on it and that thing's ready to sail the seven seas. However, the saint Shamond was indeed a real tank. In fact, one of the first, built by none other than the French during World War I. Now, French tank design was just starting with the Schneider CA-1. Psst, I made a video on that tank as well if you're interested. Okay, bye. And the next development in French armor would be the saint Shamond medium tank, which was rather amusingly started with a rivalry. This rivalry was spurred on due to a lack of cooperation with French military commanders and engineers in charge of tank projects, specifically the Schneider CA-1, which had bypassed the approval of some French officers. And this rivalry was between Schneider and, forgive my French, Fauger et Essery de la Marine et d'Armco, abbreviated FAMH and based in saint Shamond. France. The company is also simply known as saint Chamon. Now, the French government had given an order to FAMH to build tanks quite similar to the Schneider CA-1 tank, designed by Eugène Brillé. However, Eugène Brillé of the Schneider company was feeling pretty cheeky and refused to give the Schneider CA-1's patent to a rival company for free, and FAMH refused to pay up. So FAMH, or saint Chamon designers under the guidance of Colonel Emile Rimalo, were like, je ne sais pas, let's do it ourselves. What's the worst that could happen? What ended up happening was the saint Chamon, a pretty funny looking tank. The saint Chamon's design was based on the same elongated baby Holt tractor chassis as the Schneider CA-1, and had many of the same features and basic design principle of the Schneider. After all, both were essentially angry tractors. However, there's one issue. Do you see it? It's long. Too long for its chassis. One of the reasons why this tank was so long was because Colonel Emile Rimalo was the technical advisor for the saint Chamon project, and he wanted to arm the saint Chamon tank with a big 75 mil millimeter cannon. Conveniently, the cannon was built by saint Shimon slash FAMH, which made supplying them for the tanks pretty easy. And another plus for Colonel Rimalo was that these cannons were designed by him, meaning that he would essentially earn royalties every time one was used in a tank. How convenient. The downside? This large gun had to be housed in its own separate compartment, which elongated the tank to a hilarious degree. The back of the tank also had to be redesigned from the original Schneider CA-1's design, only making the long boy even longer. With a total length of about 8.9 meters or 29 feet, a width of about 2.7 meters or 8.8 feet, and a height of about 2.4 meters or 7.7 feet on the first production models of the saint Chamon tank. Now, the problem with the immense length of the tank was that a large portion of it extended out from the front, which made the tank prone to getting stuck in mud. And if you know World War I combat, you know that mud is everywhere on the World War I battlefield. In fact, when the German army first encountered the saint Chamon, they found that widening their trenches was a good counter to the tank. Accompanying the 75mm cannon were four additional Hotchkiss 8mm machine guns to protect the tank against infantry, located on the front, sides, and back. The tank weighed about 23 long tons or 25 short freedom tons. The saint Chamon was powered by an underpowered four-cylinder Panhard engine and had an electric transmission, which was innovative but somewhat fragile. The engine and transmission combo gave the saint Chamon an extremely fast top speed of just under 8 miles per hour under ideal conditions. And remember, this is World War I. There are no ideal conditions. The saint Chamon had a nine-man crew, who unfortunately had to endure the smell of smoke and burnt gasoline, and endure near boiling heat due to the engine's position in the tank. And they also had to deal with the occasional toxic gas leak from the cannon. A safe workspace indeed. Protecting this platoon of men was about 11 millimeters of armor in the front, about 8.5 millimeters on the sides, and back on the first production models of the saint Chamon, which made the tank resistant to normal rifle rounds, but not to K-bullets, which were later utilized by the German army to counter tanks or artillery, which was also used to counter tanks. The saint Chamon actually had more firepower than the Schneider, which in theory would make it better. However, when the first prototype underwent trials in September of 1916, it struggled, to say the least. In fact, when Colonel Jean-Baptiste Etienne, the so-called father of French tanks, heard news of the saint Chamon, he wasn't too happy. Nonetheless, in such early years of tank development, any tank was better than no tank. Even though the design was not optimal, Colonel Emile Rimalo lobbied for about 
about 400 units to be put into production, and production would start late in the war in March 1917. The purpose of the saint Shimon was to be a shock tank, essentially to soften up the enemy front line so that the infantry regiments could advance and clean up what's left. And it didn't really do so great in this role. When these absolute chunksters first fought in actual battle in May 1917 at the Second Battle of the Ain River, which was part of the larger Neville Offensive, the result was not great. The majority of the vehicles either ended up getting stuck or breaking down, and only about three out of the 16 deployed actually made it to the German trenches. In the next offensive, St. Chimons were accompanied by Schneider CA-1s, and out of the 63 tanks that attacked, only 21 managed to make it through. After many complaints from the tank crews who had to pilot these things, including one that said, no one wants to serve on the St. Chimon, basically saying, this tank kinda sucks. Later St. Chimon models would get upgrades to make up for their lackluster performance including an angled roof, which allowed enemy grenades thrown on top of it to roll off, improved armor on the sides and front, widened tracks and extra rollers for better cross-country performance, and from the 165th model onwards, Saint Chamons would be equipped with a different lighter cannon, specifically the M1897 field gun, and some Saint Chamons were converted to either supply vehicles or recovery tractors. While the saint Chamon struggled in frontal combat, it did find a niche as a movable artillery gun on flat terrain, firing at German fortified positions, somewhat akin to a modern self-propelled gun, which could in fact make the saint Chamon the world's first SPG. So I guess the tank wasn't a complete failure after all. The saint Chamons would fight until the end of the war, in November 1918, including with French and eventually American forces. Nonetheless, the last few saint Chamons that rolled off the supply lines were not armed and were rather used as tractors, with production being stopped at the 400th model. And the saint Chamon would be replaced by the newer and better Renault FT. In fact, if the war lasted longer, the French scheduled to replace the saint Chamon with imported British Mark Vs. And the French hate the British, so if they choose a British tank over their own, you know it's pretty bad. Some sources also say that the tank served in the Polish-Soviet War, but there's little evidence for that. Still cool to think about though. But that's enough ragging on this tank. While I do make fun of it for its wonky design and poor battle record, that's part of the reason why I love this tank. It's clunky and weird designs like this that will never be produced again. Well, at least not for another 40,000 years, but those tanks are stories for other days. Comment down below if you'd like to see me cover sci-fi tanks. I'd love to. When it comes to World War I tanks, the saint Chamon has largely been overshadowed in media by its English counterparts like the Mark V or Mark I. But the saint Chamon has recently seen a resurgence in modern media, such as the assault tank from Battlefield 1, and most recently in the 2022 version of All Quiet on the Western Front, where they're absolutely terrifying. And one saint Chamon tank still stands today in running condition at the Musée des Blancs at Samur, France. There have also been plenty of replicas of the saint Chamon, including, quite interestingly, a styrofoam model. So even though it has a weird and funky design, the saint Chamon undoubtedly contributed to the early days of tank warfare and gave us a guideline on what not to do when building tanks. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy the video, a like or subscribe would be very helpful. Thank you. This was originally supposed to come out in November, when the saint Chamon was a sort of trendy topic considering that it showed up in All Quiet on the Western Front. But then a bunch of work came, and then I peer pressured myself to make a Christmas episode for some unknown reason. Anyways, happy late new year, and here's to a new year with a stable upload schedule. Hopefully. Stay tuned for more, and have a great day. Also, in case you're interested, there's the sources, music, and other things in the description below.